Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. My name is Brittany Hernandez, and I'm so excited to welcome you to our session on an integrated approach to converting and serving more law firm leads at scale with Gavel and Leadly featuring Ashley Steps. So as our speakers today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Gavel and document automation, legal productization. Brian's here from Leadly as the founder. He's going to be going into some really interesting pieces around what you can do with Leadly. And then Ashley has generously given her time to be here today. She's a managing partner at Ripley Steps and Associates. So for our roadmap and agenda for today, we're going to start with Brian, who's going to go over how you can use Leadly for digital transformation of your law firm, how to streamline your subscriptions, and how to attract more qualified leads. Then we're going to hear from Ashley, who's going to go over what does this look like when it's applied? So in a real law firm environment, what types of things can you use these different platforms for in the example of an estate planning and elder law firm? Then I will pick this up with the idea around document automation, how you can use stored information in Lily using the Gavel and Lily integration to generate documents with conditional logic, as well as go into a little bit around what people are doing with the legal productization piece. We'll have a few minutes for questions towards the end, so you can put your questions in the chat as you think of them, and then we'll also go over how you can get started today. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brian from Lazy. Awesome. Thank you. Um, hope everybody's having a great uh, morning so far. Thanks for joining. Um, so I'm going to jump in. My name is Brian Pavlardo. Uh, uh, I run Pavlardo Digital, which is a consulting firm. We uh, help businesses use technology to uh, grow more efficiently, to sell more stuff to more people more frequently. We have a pretty large cohort of our customers, our attorneys, um, and uh, are using Leadly, which is a software that we uh, sell, we provide to small businesses. Um, that is most of the things that a small business needs to market and sell and, and automate things inside of their business. So what I'd like to kind of get into today during my time is really this idea of like how to transform your your business using technology. So I that's a, you know, this whole idea of like business transformation is something that a lot of people uh, talk about and, and say it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So what this means as far as what, what I mean when I talk about it, uh, I like to use this thing called the before and after grid. So, you know, before somebody starts working with us and gets on Leadly, what do they have? How do they feel? What's their average day look like? And then how does that change uh, you know, after after working with us. So uh, there's a few few customers on here. Hopefully you can attest that this is this is you've been your experience. Um, but uh, so like, what do you have before uh, working with us? You've got a bunch of different software trying to do a bunch of different things. What do you have afterward? You have one system that does everything, right? You feel like you have to do everything as the business owner. Uh, afterward, you feel like you can delegate tasks. You can automate tasks. Uh, you know, what does your average day look like? It's worrying about everything that you have to do. It's, it's working long hours. It's working weekends. Um, after you're confident that things are being done, uh, uh, you have, you know, your two or three kind of major things you can focus on each day and, and that's it. You, you know, that everything else is being done. Your status, uh, your business owns you, uh, afterward, you know, you own the business, right? Uh, my, uh, dad owned a small business and he used to say that, that, uh, he um, really liked the joke of like, as a small business owner, I only work half days. I just get to decide which 12 hours I want to work. Uh, so I don't know if that resonates with anybody, but um, that's kind of the, the general idea here. Um, and then the existential good versus evil, like what's like kind of the driving thing is we all started our business, our firms, uh, because we had an idea of the life that we wanted and starting a business was a way to do that. Um, and for a lot of people, like the business actually gets in the way of that life and, and by embracing technology, your business can support the life that you want instead. So when I say business transformation, that's what I mean. If you resonate with any of the stuff on the left, then, you know, I'm excited to have, you know, to, to continue this conversation. So, um, those are some pretty big claims, right? You might be thinking some version of this. Um, so how do we drive this business transformation? We really focus on three things. Uh, if you work with us, you'll probably hear this a lot. Um, the first thing is silos are for farmers, not for business owners. We'll get into what that means in just a second. The second, when you don't know where to start, 
start closest to the money. And then the third thing is we really want to encourage people to look at new revenue opportunities with a, and a special focus on recurring revenue. So let's start, silos are for farmers, not for business owners. So here's the problem. The problem is for most small businesses, the process of buying software really sucks. You know, so here's an example, right? You start a business and you go, okay, great. I need to get paid. Well, let's go out and let's buy a QuickBooks subscription, right? And then a little bit later, okay, well, now we need to communicate with, with customers. So we go out and we buy email marketing software or MailChimp or something like that. We need, you know, we have contracts that need to get signed. So we go out and we purchase DocuSign. We need a way for people to book with us. So we go out and we buy Calendar, right? We need a way to track opportunities and contacts. So we go out and we buy HubSpot. We need a way to track projects. So we go out and we buy Asana. We need to, God dang it, I need to stop giving out my personal cell phone number. So we go out and we buy Ring Central, right? Um, we need to start scheduling social media. We go and buy Hootsuite, right? So but at the end of it, we have like each of these dots represents a software and they all live in, in silos from each other. Then we want to start to get smart with our business. So we think, what if something happens in one system? Can we do something in another? Is that even possible if we've set ourselves up this way? And the, the answer is like, yeah, kind of. You know, if you're really good with like Zapier or something like that, you can connect these softwares together. But I mean, you're all attorneys, you know, we don't we don't necessarily want or need for you to, to become like software engineers to get your systems to talk to each other. That should just be a thing that that happens naturally. Right. So the, the point is that if you're kind of Frankensteining your your processes and your systems together, it's really hard. It's creating a lot of extra work for you. Um, so here's kind of transformation step number one is, you know, whenever we look at, at our customers, we, we want for you to simplify your software and get as much stuff as you can into one system, uh, which has the added benefit, of course, of canceling all of those other subscriptions, which can save for some of our clients hundreds of dollars a month. Um, so Leadly at its core is everything that most small businesses need to succeed in one system and, you know, on, on top of that, you've got, you know, me and my team to consult with you and make sure that things get set up great, right? So I'm not going to get into this. The reason this is a confusing slide to look at is because I don't want to get into like every single feature. But if you look at this, you know, anything from email marketing to, to CRM to, you know, opportunities, power dialer, phone. Uh, review management, all of that stuff is in one system. So if there's, you know, something that you need inside of your system, chances are we can do it from like a marketing or a sales standpoint. Now we'll get into in a little bit, like there, there are some like outliers here. One thing is like Gabble, which I'm really excited about this, this partnership. But uh, most of the things that, you know, a small business needs to run day to day, we, we offer in one, uh, you know, one place, right? At the core of it is an automation system, which we'll we'll show you the, the, the here in a minute, uh, so that if anything happens in one area of the software, you can automate something else in another area. We make it really simple. So you know the idea of like never having to to remember to follow up or to uh, oh gosh, I'll get you that contract. You know we can just automate a lot of that stuff so that you can focus on what you're good, right? So that's kind of the the first thing. Simplify your software. Thing number two, when you don't know where to start, start closest. To to the mind, right? So the, the challenge here is that you, if you haven't documented your process, if you haven't thought through your processes, it's impossible to optimize it. So one of the things that we encourage you to do is, is write down on paper or on like a mind map or something, like how do customers happen inside of your businesses? Um, but, and, and so like how we, we like to think about this is like if, if we do this as like a target, right? The money's in the middle. And then as we move outside of that, uh, especially I think probably for most attorneys, we have the intake process, right? We have the contact database. These are leads that, that you've uh, gotten over time. Maybe a level outside of that is website, a level outside of that is, is advertising, right? So we like to say, you know, if you're not sure where to start, start as close to the money as you can and then work backwards uh, from there. So my, uh, my grandpa, his name's Carmelo. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, but he always used to call everybody jabronis. Uh, and one of the things he would say is, don't be a jabroni. And uh, so like one of the things that that we run into is people wanting to start with like advertising. Hey, I need to grow my business. Like, let's look at Facebook or whatever. And we really try to encourage people, okay, before we do that, 
let's get our intake process. Let's figure out how customers happen. Let's optimize that and let's create processes and automations and workflows so that that process is seamless and it happens every single time for every single customer, right? So, you know, we ask the question, how do customers happen? Most businesses go, ah, I don't really know. <laughs> so we help them define that and, and document that process. That's all, you know, kind of part of, part of this, right? Um, so then we, we optimize closer to the money. For a lot of clients, especially for, for attorneys, that's the intake process, right? So, um, you know, we've got this kind of thing here of how uh, maybe customers used to happen with some of our customers, which is somebody submits a form on your website, you wait a few days before responding, you email to see what a good time is, they ask about Tuesday, Tuesday's no good, we're going to ask about Wednesday, okay, Wednesday works. Okay, we'll figure everything else out during the discovery call, right? Like, it, I don't know if that rings a bell at all. But that's how a lot of people deal with like a new client. And it's a pretty terrible experience, right? So here's an ideal intake process that we might build out inside of Lead. Is from the website, somebody schedules a meeting with you, right? They get automated confirmations. Uh, now you're going to need some information. So they get prompted to fill out an intake form specific to whatever it is they want to meet about, right? Then you want to provide some education. So you need to accept some information. You also need to give some information so they come up ready to buy, right? So a lot of times that's an email series. We like to encourage people to record videos, kind of walking through what the process looks like. That way they're not showing up being like, hey, what's a trust again? Um, then you have the meeting. Uh, we send you an email out that goes, hey, click this one button if they're going to become a client. That triggers a whole bunch of other stuff to, to kick off. And, you know, that's it, right? Now, I'm going to bold the things that required manual action in this whole process. Have the meeting, click the button. That's it. Everything else we can automate inside of Lulu. So that's kind of the, the power here. And the, the whole idea here is be easy to work with, because if you don't, your, your customers are going to look for somebody who's, who's doing some version of this, right? So uh, that's a, kind of a preview there. So, uh, uh, you know, step number two is optimize close to the money. Step number one, consolidate your software. Now, the third thing that we encourage people to look at is new revenue opportunities. So I won't get too into this, but um, basically, you know, we unlock through the software a lot of new opportunity for revenue. So that might be, you know, easily creating subscriptions for annual reviews, things like that. Um, so, you know, after we kind of nail down that process, we want to help you drive new additional revenue, you know, cross-selling and upselling to, to new clients, that sort of thing. So... All of that powered, you know, by the software, and then we're of course available to like consult with with any of that. So, what um, I'd like to do is is pass this off to Ashley. Uh, she's got a couple of examples of like how this works, kind of in real life. I know I'm I'm talking sort of at a theoretical level. She's gonna you know bring it in terms of just like practically how does this work. Um, and then uh, there's a slide here at the end of this. There's a few here, but I don't want to take any more of your time. <laughs> is um, you know, there's a missing piece of this, which is actually like producing the legal documents, which we just haven't had a good solution for until what uh, Brittany's going to show you in a little bit of, of an integration between these two systems. So uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Ashley, um, take it away. Amazing. Let me go ahead and share my screen for her. One second. Thank you, Brian. Brian is awesome, and I am his favorite client, despite That's true. anyone. <laughs> Except for the other clients on this call. Um, everybody. <laughs> so, um, as Brian said, Leadly has so much that it can do. Um, I actually had the hardest time trying to decide okay, what can I show everyone? What will be most helpful? Um, Leadly handles about 70 to 80% of our back end. Um, our phones, text messages, uh, automations. Um, we're actually working on a um, automated intake system all through Leadly. So it's wonderful. But um, what I can show easily and quickly today is a nurturing campaign that we've created from a lead magnet that is inside of Leadly. So on the left, you have uh, our quiz funnel. Um, this is a funnel that was uh, created in the funnel creator in Leadly. It's a quiz. So it asks uh, five questions. You really can complete it in 60 seconds. And at the end where they're to submit it, that's where we gather the lead information. Um, 
name, phone number, email, uh, any additional contact uh, information or whatever information you'd like to have, um, we gather it there. On the, uh, we then can use that information to segment for our nurturing campaigns, all done through uh, Leadly. You can go to the next slide, Brittany. Um, at once they uh, enter their uh, the lead information, it takes them to the thank you page. Here they can bypass waiting on the email with the results and go ahead and book a consultation on my calendar. They can see the dates. Um, they can book a quick discovery call, or if they want the full out uh, consultation, they have the access. They can book at their convenience. Here. This is the back end. This is what an automation workflow looks like in Leadly. So this is for the Medicaid quiz results and follow-up emails. Um, once they submit that form, it's called a survey in Leadly, it runs them through this automation. So it calculates, uh, it actually does math calculations. So uh, if their answer is um, wrong, it marks, it puts an X if their answer is correct. It puts a check mark, but it also tags them for other automations that we have set up. So let's say they go through this automation without ever opening an email. We know. We also know which email they opened, how far they got in the email. Um, if the email included videos, we can also see how far into the video that they watched. We can have triggers start based on, okay, let's say they only watch 10% of the video. Okay, that'll add them to another um, campaign that, hey, um, you only watched you know, a little bit of video. Did you have some more questions? Do you need to schedule a call to discuss you know, options? Uh, do you have concerns? Do you have, you know, just the options are endless. Next slide, Brittany. So this is the results email from the quiz, all done in Leadly. There, nothing happened on my part, as Brian said, you, they, we have the meeting and click a button. So the client clicked the button, they got this email, they can schedule an appointment. There's additional information at the top of the email about the firm, but um, all done in Leadly. Now, this is probably one of my favorite parts of Lili. This is the opportunity dashboard. So anytime someone comes into our firm in Lili, it shows up here. It tells me where they came from, um, what they clicked on, if they clicked on a funnel, if they clicked on our website, if they clicked on a referral link. Um, our referral sources have their own links that they send out to their clients. So I know who sent this person I know why they sent this person. So they're tagged. It also, you can set it up to where it estimates the value or of that opportunity. So if they came in through just a deed link from an attorney out of state, we know, okay, this is probably going to cost this because they just need a deed. So all of that shows up on your dashboard, but you can also create unlimited dashboards. So if you just wanted one for your estate planning clients, you could just have an estate planning dashboard. You can have your tasks there, your daily tasks. You can have tasks that you've assigned to team members to see where they are. Um, if you can think it, it's probably in Leadly. Now, this is where we take Leadly from, uh, from Leadly to Gavel. Um, we do Medicaid planning across the country. So one of our applications is about 32 pages long, as you can see. We gather a lot of the information in Leadly and transfer it over to Gavel to complete a lot of these PDFs. Um, an application could have multiple forms. Gavel helps us do that, keep organized and not have to do a lot of data entry. So um, with that, I will hand it over to Brittany so she can show you how that goes. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I feel like 
a lot of the time, um, there's not as much practice sharing between lawyers because, you know, oh, they're my competitor or whatever else. But I think that you really bring a spirit of collaboration and sharing because I feel like it always comes back when we're able to kind of share what we're doing and how we're optimizing our firms. And that ultimately, we're able to all serve our demographics um, as well. So let's talk a little bit about that piece that Ashley mentioned around Gavel. And this is all around document automation. And we're excited to also see people and lawyers who are creating legal products using Gavel as well. Um, so Gavel and Leadly have an integration with each other, which makes it to where, as Ashley mentioned, if you already have information stored somewhere, we really want you to not have to manually enter that information anywhere else. It should be able to smoothly and quickly uh, transfer without you doing anything else automatically, transferring that information from one place to another. So what I'm gonna go into is a little bit around what is Gavel, how it's used, what it looks like, and then also how it works with Leadly when you have all of these great intake pieces with branching logic and the automations and they get an email or they get a text message with this information and they get to book their meeting and all of those different pieces also around the nurture campaign of this email gets sent out on this day, then wait three days and send them this follow-up email with this video. So there's a lot you can do to front load the work um, before you ever start using this piece. Um, although there are different options and ways you can do this as well. So what is Gavel? Gavel is a legal tech platform uh, that makes it to where you're able to automate your own templates. So sometimes what we hear from other customers who use different tools, which I won't mention, is that they're not able to use their own custom templates that they've put a lot of their time and effort over years of practice into perfecting. And so what we can do is make it to where you're able to actually automate your own templates and also streamline the process for preparing things like deeds, for example, where you have lots of different types, but they could be consolidated into one for an easier process. So I'm gonna give you that example today as well. So we're not only using this for this kind of internal document automation, but we're also able to create client facing workflows with this as well, which are able to offer as part of your practice with still doing kind of billable hour work or as a means of separate revenue generating activities uh, such as adding a paywall before the um, workflow that makes it to where the person pays a flat fee. So you're getting value-based billing and you're able to scale your practice using that technique as well. So let's go into what it looks like. Um, so this is what Gavel looks like when you sign into your account. And um, what you do is let's say, for example, that you have a template that you want to automate. When we talk about like automation, we're talking about the ability to, instead of having to go through and say, I'm going to go, let's say I'm going to prepare a deed, right? So I'm going to go into a deed and I'm going to prepare it. Maybe what I would do is duplicate one I did before. I had to figure out which one I did and what I want to do. <laughs> Ashley, I love your face right now. Um, at least this is what I did when I was first starting out as lawyers and I didn't know anything about legal technology. Maybe I would come in, that's gonna be the same. I would try to find my client's information in some other system and then come in here and change the name here to let's say Ashley Steps, right? And then I would put, um, you know, now she's married and then this is the name of this person and I'd go through and manually type in everything, take out different places like, oh, I don't need this paragraph, da, 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 da. So what we can do instead in a lot more streamlined way is actually consolidate all of these different pieces and their, rel their different clauses that are gonna show or hide depending on which type of deed it is. So let's say for example, in this deed that Ashley was kind enough to share with me, um, this is like a template, a master template that you would have where the deed is generally about the same structure, right? The same kind of formatting, the same type of language, um, we're just changing a couple of different pieces along the way um, where let's say, for example, we need this piece for the for the message here. Right. We're saying remove this if it's a quick claim deed. Right. Or remove this particular phrase. This is really, really helpful to, to get this insight, because what we're able to do within Gavel is create questions that help us to navigate through these workflows or these uh, documents and 
show or hide things depending on single or multiple conditions of logic. So I could create a scenario in which I'll show you in a minute where I say, show this paragraph only if this particular answer or question is answered a certain way. So the way that we actually use Gavel and what it looks like in, when you're creating a workflow like this is you would say new workflow. You're able to start with documents, which means you're gonna take your document and drop it into Gavel. And it's gonna look for all those places where something repeats like grantor, grantee and things like that. And it's gonna suggest different questions that you could ask that would fill out that information. In our case, I'm just gonna say, start with questions to show you what this looks like. So I'm just gonna say demo. Leadly by uh, Gavel, and then we'll say create. So you'll see that what's happening with the kind of software democratization movement right now, which is the idea that people who don't have any back history or experience in coding are able to create internal and client facing applications is due to the fact that I'm able to save this and run this and I'm automatically given a link that I can share with someone else that they're able to uh, interact with due to there being default elements. You can take off this header. Obviously you don't really need a huge Gavel logo to show up. You can give it, to, make it to where it's very white labeled, meaning it has your own logo and it has your own styling and it has your own colors and all of that different stuff. So that's how quickly we're able to start building something, right? Now I can make changes. I can say, let's say I have like deed information. And for deed information, we need a couple of things. Maybe we need a drop down that tells us like, what type of deed are you preparing? Now you only have to do this part that I'm showing you one time. So you can say something like deed type, and this allows us as a variable to refer to this question. And then I could give different options like warranty, um, quick claim, for example, and more. We can save this and run it. And what we can see is that now we've started to build out something that we can then assign different logic around. For example, I can add a new page here. This is how this kind of no code, low code uh, building works. I can say something like, um, I don't know, like spouse information or or let's do um, like, like grantee information. So I can go ahead and build this out exactly as I want to. And I can even assign logic to pages and questions and so on, depending on what I need. Um, let's do something like first name. Uh, and then we can give it like something like grantee first name. Now I can save this and I can add logic to this that says something like, in this particular case, obviously we always want the grantee information, but just to show you what this would look like if you wanted to add, let's say for example, the first question was like, are they married or are they a widow? And we need to know the, the person, the decedent's name or something like that, for example. You can say show if the first question is answered the value of warranty. You can also do this at the question level and say something like show or hide this if this is some value. So that's how we're starting to build up the logic that's in this particular workflow. Now, where the power really comes in in your documents is that you're able to actually directly interact with your workflows that you're creating within your Word documents as well. Um, as Ashley mentioned, for PDFs, we actually have something called Gavel Blueprint, which is the one I was kind of saying where you start with documents, and it's available for both Word and PDF. It makes it to where you can take that document, that 13 page document, for example, drop it into a uh, Gavel Blueprint, and it's gonna pull out all the different places where it sees that, and it's gonna generate this workflow for you. So you don't have to manually type in this or this or whatever else, and it's gonna insert those variables into your documents. So let's say, for example, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my um, document tagger within Word. I can see the different workflows that I've created here. If I wanted to look for the one that I'm working on, I can just say um, demo Leadly by Gavel. And what I can do is I can go in and I can say, for example, I only want this to show this whole paragraph. I only want this to show if the D type is warranty. You could also make multiple conditions where it says, or the D type is quick claim, or if something is blank, you know, or is not or whatever else. And then all you have to do is say insert condition 
And now this entire thing will only show under those conditions. Okay. So that's how this works. And, and when you're done and you're ready, you'll just attach that document to your back end here and then save and run. And then you can have all sorts of things happen where you can say, you know, for example, I want this to be emailed to me after they are done, um, after it's filled out and whatever else. Now, the power that we're talking about of the connection and integration between different platforms, such as Gavel and Ludly together, is the fact that you're able to do this very quickly because you already have a lot of this information stored somewhere, right? You already have it stored in Leadly, probably all the way from that initial contact of you having them fill out the quiz for 60 seconds and they put in their name and their email. So from that point, you're already collecting information that is reusable. And in this particular situation, what we can do and which um, Ashley kind of hinted at and showed you, uh, you can create automations with triggers and actions. So since Brian didn't actually show the platform of what Leadly looks like, you can see what it looks like here. Um, this is a dashboard kind of area that Ashley mentioned as well, where you can have different dashboards and, and all of those pieces. But you also have the ability to connect your Gavel account here. You can look at your and see your workflows here that all the ones that I made and showed you, even the one that I just made right here. And if I wanted to make new questions, custom fields that I wanna be able to map over to fill out this information very quickly, I can sync those fields here. Now with the automation piece that Ashley showed you as well for different branches, you can get as you know complex or as simple as you want. In this case, what I want to have happen in this scenario is with at the contact level. So if I'm gonna go in and I wanna prepare a deed for one of my clients or contacts here, then what I can do is I can just go in and I can say, um, instead of having to go through that process of opening five different documents and duplicating and going through all these different pieces, I actually have a section right here where I can indicate which type of deed I want to prepare for them. I have the full name of the grantee, in this case, Dua Lipa, which is very exciting for me. Um, I have the legal description of the property and whatever other questions you might want to ask, right? For this specific type of questionnaire, you can have it to where you change it for them. If I wanted to change this to something else. And all I need to do is say, generate deed and save that. And what it's going to do is it's going to actually run through this workflow and it's going to send me an email and show that it's it's actually ready for me, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into here. I'm gonna just refresh this and refresh this here. You can see that after about what, 10 seconds, I've received an email with a completed deed for this person. So it's pulled through Brittany Hernandez, a single person. And if I wanted to have this be different, it would be depending on you know whatever questions I have there. By Dua Lipa, the grantee. And actually what you're not seeing, but it's happening here, is this paragraph is showing because it's a warranty deed. Like I showed you when we were going through the, the document, lots of things are happening under the surface. I've also made it to where you have both the PDF if you review it and you say it's good to go and you need to send this off for DocuSign signature or whatever else, or for, or sorry, not <laughs> for notarization in this case, but you also have a Word version sent to you as well in case you want to download this and make any final changes that, you know, oh, last minute you remembered something, something. Also notice that the person's name pulled through here and here as well as what kind of deed we prepared for them. Um, and you can, you can customize all of these different messages as well. Okay, so let's say now you want to be able to uh, see this information in here too. In Gavel, we also have something called a data manager. So once that went through, I'm also able to just look through and see the same information that pulled through here. And it also makes it to where I'm able to use this information in other workflows directly within Gavel as well. So this is really, really important to show you how important this kind of trigger action thing is within Lily and connecting that to Gavel. So in this case, I have a very simple automation set up that says, the trigger is when a contact is changed and where the, the checkbox that I showed you has generate deed added, I want you to create that gavel document 
And I want you to map the field over in this way. Now, I only had to set this up one time, but I can use it on multiple different people or the same person multiple times. And you could have a different trigger. You could be like when a form is submitted or when I click this other button or whatever the case may be for what you're trying to do. So um, in this case, for example, I'm going to make sure that we have Quick Claim and Ashley and all these other pieces. I'm gonna generate this one as well. And in the meantime, I'm gonna set you up to talk a little bit about what if you wanna start creating client-facing workflows. And when I'm talking about client-facing workflows, I'm talking about the ability to, well, this is very internal, right? Your, your clients aren't gonna be going into Leadly and seeing any of this information. This is for you and your firm to be able to really be organized and have everything in one place for, as Ashley mentioned, booking calls, taking calls, you know, you can see for here, example, the history of this person and so on. So when we're making client facing workflows, it would be something that the client would actually interact with and maybe pay for something or not pay for something. But in the meantime, we saw after about 10 seconds or so, we received as the, in this case, I've set it up that the lawyer would receive this particular email. And, you know, now we have it for Demetria. And this is actually a quick claim deed instead for her. And we can also see that that information, that whole paragraph has also been removed. The name has changed. All of the different pieces and information have also changed here, 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 the description of the land, the names and so on. So what you can see is very quickly and very easily, you're able to click one, two buttons, generate deed and save. And because these two systems are talking to each other and you have the information stored in that place, uh, you're able to use it in many different ways. And what this does look like at the end of the day after it's tagged in the Word add-in like I showed you is like this. Now, this is to show you that you didn't have to know how to tag this or what the syntax, for example, is for this, end if, or percentage signs and all that because you have this handy dandy Word add-in that shows you exactly what to do. And you just have to say, I want this to go here and I only want this to show up in this case. So that's what's happening within Gavel. That's happening within your document. Now, as I hinted in my last few moments uh, of my time, I'll just kind of show you what this could look like if you are wanting to do a Kamara like client facing workflow versus just internal um, internal workflows. And the the idea here is that. Similar to what Ashley showed you with the Leadly, you can also use um, Gavel for this, depending on like how complex you want to get with your questions. And if you want to have documents in attached and whatever else. So just kind of from your uh, knowledge of what you need to have done, you would change depending and use different things for different things. So similar to what Ashley showed you in this case, this is a, a Gavel workflow that is embedded into a website where the person or the firm specializes in veterans rights. And they want to be able to help filter through people and only, you know, really invite people to work with them if they think that they're going to be able to work with them based on some di different conditions. So in this case, they have to answer uh, certain questions in a certain way in order to get through all the way kind of to the end with the positive result. So in this case, if somebody says none of the above and they continue and continue, then they're actually going to be told at this juncture that they're likely not eligible. So they say, thanks, Mary, view your decision letter below. They also get an email with this as well in case they navigate away from this page. And we're able to see their information is formatted. We have the date automatically pull through. We have our header. Um, we have their name. We have their outcome, which is based on your answers, you may not be eligible, right? So this is very like, depending on your answers, you're going to get this result or something else, right? Now, if they said something else instead, like they had burns or whatever else, and you can see the, the, the example of question logic here as well. But if they say yes and yes, we're going to have a really different result, right? In this case, we're actually going to see that they are eligible or that they may be eligible for this type of grant. Based on your answers, you may be eligible for this type of grant. We'd love to meet with you. And then they can book a time on their Leadly calendar or whatever else. So lastly, what I would say is what we're seeing is not only this free kind of lead generation piece that um, Ashley hinted at as well um, when she showed you kind of like that 60 second um, piece, but also you can have something called a bundle where you have it be a paid workflow. 
So you can have it to where somebody has to pay before they start or they need to pay um, after or like before the documents are generated, for example. You get to choose where and you can have multiple workflows in a single one as well. So maybe in this case, I have it to where the person needs to pay before they learn, you know, what they um, what their answers are or like to have the gener the document generated. So you could imagine this could be something like a will or a trust or whatever else that you would want. Um, you have a flat fee here. And then this way you're able to scale these workflows um, to the point where you're able to start generating more revenue than you can with your own time. So that's just to kind of show you some differences and pieces there. Um, and in the final kind of like two minutes or so that I have, I'll just show you a really good example of what this looks like from Hello Divorce. Um, and Hello Divorce is more in the family law space, but it does give us a good example of how you can start segmenting people based on, for example, where they are. Let's say that they're in California and what stage they're in. Are they considering a divorce? Are they ready for a divorce? Has their divorce been filed or has their divorce been finalized? So you can kind of see different options here. And you can see that they have a completely DIY plan for $400, a pro plan that in includes things like a dedicated specialist, a mediation plan, and a plus plan at different tiers. So depending on what the person needs and what stage they're in and what jurisdiction they're in, they're going to really get segmented, as we talked about a couple of times now, down to the thing that would be most relevant to them. So in this case, these are all, all of the forms in Hello Divorce are automated using Gavel. So it makes it to where you go through that same process to set this up. But once it's sent up that first time, as you saw, it just needs to be run in whatever, you know, uh, whatever order you need it to be. Um, but that setup process is very easy through that kind of piece around uh, no code add-in and, and being able to do that very easily. So I hope that that makes sense and is useful. I'm going to stop at this juncture to take questions for a few minutes. So um, thank you all for, for kind of hanging with us for a little while. Does anyone have any questions for myself or for Brian or for Ashley? And I haven't checked the chat. So let me just quickly take a look at that. Looks like we don't have any questions in the chat and that's completely fine. And also if you think of any questions, um, you know, you know, after our presentation today, I'm gonna put some information in the chat for how to book a call with myself or uh, with Brian, for example, as well as my email address. Um, and then if you wanna connect with Ashley, I'm gonna show our emails in a second. Before I do our next steps and wrap up, Brian or Ashley, did you wanna comment at all on anything that I kind of shared or has been shared that I didn't mention that I should have? Uh, you know, so I would just say that as far as the integration between Lily and, and Gavel, um, you know, we've, we've really tried. So first of all, that's something that, uh, you know, I have a background in software development, whatever. Um, so like that's an integration that I built myself. We are looking to kind of onboard those first couple of clients. So if you already use Leadly, you're interested in Gavel or, or already use Gavel or whatever, um, I think this is a really powerful, you know, uh, uh, integration here. Um, and, you know, so we're looking for people, you know, our first kind of round of people to, uh, you know, to test this out, upload your docs in. Uh, now, because it's new, you may find some bugs, that sort of thing. So work with me with that. But uh, we are, you know, we're, we're eager to, to kind of get the first cohort of people using this integration so we can roll it out maybe in, in a wider way. Yeah, absolutely. Ashley, any final thoughts you want to share? Gavel and Lily, awesome. Amazing products. If you don't have them, you really should. Also, Brittany and Brian are amazing. Uh, I just realized we're bad looking at us on the <laughs> Yes, I love it. No, I can appreciate that for sure. Okay, awesome. Thank you for saying that. I'm going to just quickly uh, wrap us up with um, in Canva to show you our next steps. So if you want to learn more about Leadly, you can reach out to Brian to start streamlining those processes and Streamline those subscriptions so you can get them down to a single one and attracting more qualified leads, as you saw with Ashley's kind of really going through that qualification process. You can also reach out to me to learn more about Gavel or start your free trial at Gavel.io and start automating your own bespoke firm templates today with lots of different logic. You can also connect with Ashley to learn more about how she manages and serves clients at scale with these two platforms. 
here's our information. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach out to me at Brittany at Gabble.io. You can see Brian and Ashley's emails and respective um, websites as well here. So thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and end the meeting here. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you. Thanks.